Today, I'd like to share an excerpt from the 1985 book, Vygotsky and the Social Formation of Mind by James Warch. This is one of my favorite books. This is from pages 17 to 18. The fundamental claim in Vygotsky's genetic or developmental analysis is that human mental processes can be understood only by considering how and where they occur in growth. Well, we need to concentrate not on the product of development, but on the very process by which higher forms are established. To encompass in research the process of a given thing's development in all its phases and changes from birth to death fundamentally means to discover its true nature, its essence, for it is only in movement that a body shows what it is. Thus, the historical, that is, in the broadest sense of history, study of behavior is not an auxiliary aspect of theoretical study, but rather forms its very base. Vygotsky, 1978, 64 to 65. Vygotsky contrasted his genetic approach with approaches that attempt to analyze psychological phenomena without regard for their place in development. He argued that such research can provide description, but not explanation. Following Lewin, we can apply the distinction between the phenotypic, descriptive, and genotypic, explanatory viewpoint to psychology. By a developmental study of a problem, I mean the disclosure of its genesis, its causal dynamic basis. By phenotypic, I mean the analysis that begins directly with an object's current features and manifestation. It is possible to furnish many examples from psychology where serious errors have been committed because these viewpoints have been confused. Page 62. The last sentence is particularly important because it reflects Vygotsky's concern with the problem of how assumptions about method influence the interpretation of psychological phenomena. He was arguing that misunderstandings often arise among researchers because they do not share assumptions about how a phenomenon should be investigated, and hence about what it is. For Vygotsky, an essential aspect of the definition of psychological phenomenon is its position in the genetic transition. He assumed that the form of a phenomenon reflects the transformations it has undergone and the various factors that have entered into its development. Vygotsky's point is not that psychological research which fails to use a genetic method is invalid or useless. Elsewhere in his writings, he explicitly stated that such research can make an important contribution to the overall picture of psychology. However, he believed that without genetic analysis, one can only describe certain aspects of psychological phenomena and cannot understand inner workings and causal dynamics. Perhaps more important for my present purposes, he believed that the failure to recognize the impact of method on the interpretation and definition of psychological phenomena can lead to confusion. Gotsky's major focus in genetic analysis was on developmental processes as they normally occur but he also examined the effects of disruptions and interventions. Such procedures gave rise to several of his hyphenated terms that refer to variants of genetic analysis. In comparative genetic analysis, he was concerned with how the disruption of one of the forces of development would affect the evolution of overall practical and intellectual activities in humans. For example, Vygotsky studies the effects of deafness on the development of various mental functions. His approach to this issue is somewhat unique because he views deafness primarily in terms of how it changes a complex system of development. For this reason, problems such as deafness, mental retardation, and blindness have always held great theoretical interest for Vygotsky, 1981c, and his followers, for example, Leontev, 194-8, and Misharikov, 1974. Vygotsky also examined disruptions and interventions in genetic processes through the experimental developmental method, which calls for an experimenter to intervene in some developmental process in order to observe how such intervention changes it. Again, the primary motivation for doing this is to observe genetic processes. 
our method may be called experimental developmental in the sense that it artificially provokes or creates a process of psychological development. This approach is equally appropriate to the basic aim of dynamic analysis. If we replace object analysis by process analysis, then the basic task of research obviously becomes a reconstruction of each stage in the development of the process. The process must be turned back to its initial stages. Gotsky, 1978, page 6162. The Gotsky's claims about genetic analysis do not end with the general assertion that psychological processes must be studied in transition. In addition, he had some specific ideas about the nature of development. First, he defined development primarily in terms of fundamental, quote, revolutionary shifts rather than steady quantitative increments. At these points of revolutionary dislocation, he argued, the very nature of development changes. Second, Vygotsky defined major transition points in development in terms of changes in the form of mediation utilized. Third, he claimed that the explanation of psychological phenomena must rely on an analysis of several different types of development, or what I shall term genetic domains whereas genetic analysis is often limited to ontogenetic comparisons. Vygotsky included other types of comparisons, such as phylogenetic and socio-historical as well. As M. Cole and S. Scribner have pointed out, when Vygotsky speaks of his approach as developmental, this is not to be confused with the theory of child development. The developmental method in Vygotsky's view is the central method of psychological science, 1978, page 7. 